Hi everyone, we are the Chaotic Cat Herders and we are going to show you all the management concepts based on our sequel of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. So here is a little reminder of the last movie. wants to hear from you. The world is waiting. Can't you shut up? I'm busy. You're a rotten mean father. You'll never give me anything I want. I won't go to school till I have it. Violet. Call it, mother. Open it, Charlie. Let's see that golden ticket. Wouldn't that be fantastic? It's not fair to raise his hopes. Never mind. Go on, open it, Charlie. I want to see that gold. Stop it, Dad. I've got the same chance as anybody else, haven't I? I never dreamed that I would climb over the moon in ecstasy, but nevertheless, it's there that I'm shortly about to be. Because I've got a golden ticket. I've got a golden chance to make my way. And with a golden ticket, it's a golden day. I'm so glad you could come. This is going to be such an exciting day. <laughs> Little surprises around every corner, but nothing dangerous. Don't be alone. Oh. Ah! <laughs> There's no earthly way of knowing <laughs> He's singing. which direction we are going. So now Charlie is given the authority to run the chocolate factory, but must be properly trained to do so. Our story takes off with the exchange of power between Mr. Wonka and Charlie. The current business goal is to reorganize the business structure after a sneak attack from Veruca Salt. Charlie, being just a kid with no experience, struggles with all the functions of being a manager. Strategizing the development and success of this mission presents a challenge. In addition to the learning undertaking, Charlie will also go head to head with a competitor that threatens the future of the company and will ultimately have to deal with the aftermath of bad publicity. Willy Wonka is present in every episode to help guide Charlie along in crucial managerial lessons. The end of the series will lift the mystique of Wonka's empire by employing new marketing tactics to positively change the company's tainted image. Now, we'll introduce the main characters of our show. First, we have Charlie Bucket and Willy Wonka. Charlie is an incredibly virtuous, humble, responsible, helpful, and caring young boy. He is now the CEO in training to the Wonka Chocolate Factory and finds everything to be a little bit overwhelming. But Charlie has no doubt in his mind that the training programs implemented by Willy Wonka will make his transition be nothing short of smooth. He is 
not an aggressive person and his traits make him seem like the ideal future manager for the chocolate factory. It is without a doubt that everybody in the TV series will be fond of Charlie. Next, we have Willy Wonka, and Willy Wonka is the eccentric founder of the Wonka Chocolate Factory and has recently gone into retirement and is in the midst of training Charlie to take over his factory. Willy is constantly traveling in his Wonka Vader, going to exotic places, and the things he brings back help impart wisdom on Charlie and help give him ideas for new products. Our next characters are Grandpa Joe and Veruca Salt. Grandpa Joe is an elder who has been full of life ever since Charlie chose him to accompany Charlie to Wonka's Chocolate Factory. He enjoys spending time with Charlie and is incredibly wise and loving. He also advises Charlie and gives him a lot of hope. Grandpa Joe is very sensible, which we believe he can teach to Charlie to make impactful decisions and not to make any rash decisions which could negatively affect the factory and those working around him. Last time we saw Veruca Gersal, she was covered in trash. This time, she's back and she is still the cute and pretty young girl on the outside, but inside she is terribly rotten. She is a complete brat, immature, overindulged by her parents, and incredibly manipulative and constantly scheming. She is the main antagonist in our TV show, and she is the direct competitor of the Wonka Factory, and she will not stop until she has ruined Charlie and the Wonka Factory. Our last two characters are the Oompa Loompas and Mr. Slugworth. Oompa Loompas are mischievous, love practical jokes, sing songs, and are great at improvising. Oompa Loompas tend to speak in rhyme. They are known for their knee-high stature and love for cocoa beans. They work meticulously and never leave the factory. They are loyal to Willy Wonka, which is one of the reasons why they are the only ones employed at the factory, and that is to prevent industrial espionage. Mr. Slugworth is the acting general manager who monitors activities internally and externally of the company. He is a diligent worker and wants to see Charlie succeed. He brainstorms with Charlie on strategies, planning, and controlling all of the functions of the factory. When Charlie makes a positive decision, Slugworth simply nods his head in subtle approval. Slugworth has a dry sense of humor and remains expressionless most of the time. He is always dressed professionally in a suit and tie. He fulfills a spokesperson and liaison role for the company and directly deals with the public. When the salts attack the Wonka factory, Mr. Slugworth is the one to address the media. He is very logical, tactical, and efficient. Now we'll talk about the specific management challenges for Willy Wonka and Charlie. Willy Wonka's main management challenges through the storyline are teaching young Charlie the way to manage the factory, which includes handling the Oompa Loompas and negative publicity. Willy Wonka's personality is eccentric and dominating and must readjust in order to properly train Charlie. The key management skills that are needed are technical skills and interpersonal skills. Technical skills are the skills in which the manager should have well knowledge about the process and policy of the company in which Willy must show Charlie how to properly use the Wonka machines and teach him the ingredients to the Wonka bar. The next skill is interpersonal skills. Willy is very demanding and restrictive in his thought. In order for him to be effective in training Charlie, Willy must be empathetic and sensitive to Charlie. Now, Willy Wonka will assume his role as top manager still until Charlie's apprenticeship is over. That means Willy must act in an ethical demeanor to ensure that Charlie follows the same level of ethicality. This is the best way because Willie is viewed as a major role model in the community and Charlie must maintain this image after and throughout his apprenticeship. Next, we'll address Charlie's management challenges. As Charlie enters into the chocolate factory, he undergoes rigorous training. This includes learning how to manage the equipment and the Oompa Loompas. Charlie is a sweet young boy who is eager to learn and succeed. The key management skills that are needed are interpersonal skills and conceptual skills. Interpersonal skills are the skills in which he will need to interact with the Oompa Loompas. Being empathetic and sensitive is key to winning the hearts of the Oompa Loompas and motivating them to do their work. Conceptual skills are needed to get an idea of how the chocolate factory will operate correctly. 
seeing the big picture will allow him to grasp the daily operation of the factory. As an entry level management, Charlie will learn the technical details of the chocolate factory. Most of his role will consist of the following the direction of Willie. As he is learning, he will follow an ethical guideline realizing the right of the Oompa Loompas and the promoting of the greatest good for the community. So as we discussed about the challenges of Charlie and Willy Wonka, in episode 2, Veruca seeks revenge on Charlie and Willy Wonka. Her family owns a candy factory just like Willy Wonka, but they treat their employees with bitterness and cruelness. Veruca and her father secretly sends undercover agents to sneak in and retrieve the secret recipes from the Wonka factory. And they are also tasked with writing misleading health violation complaints against the Wonka factory. This is the opportunity for Charlie to see Willie take social responsibility. Willie, as an ethical role model, must be concerned with the obligation to his stakeholders. The community as a whole is a major stakeholder to Willy Wonka as they are a source of revenue for his chocolate. Willie will send Mr. Slugworth to do a press conference regarding a change in their policy and their projects to improve their chocolate and to improve the Oompa Loompas Union. So in the Wonka press conference, we show some examples of having social responsibility and following ethical guidelines. Mr. Slugworth spoke to the press about the Wonka factory reaffirming their beliefs and a policy of being transparent. Being transparent is reporting financial information to the community on a timely basis, reporting the amount of emission the company produces quarterly, and reporting the amount of things they contribute to the community. Also, Mr. Slugworth he spoke about the strategic corporate social responsibility perspective, which the corporation takes the view of the community to show how the corporation should operate their business. The best way to execute this is creating a committee who comes to the factory quarterly to discuss with Willie and Mr. Slugworth and Charlie about ways to improve the community and the business as a whole. Now we will talk about the steps Willie and Charlie had to make in order to restore the factory's good name. During their team chocolate meeting, they had to plan for the future, find competitive advantages, redesign their organization structures, and prospectively manage their diverse human resources. To plan for the restoration of their brand name, they must make an estimation on future conditions and circumstances which will encompass the strategic, tactical, and operational planning. Producing the best chocolate in the land is the strategic planning, which is the long-term plan of the organization. Ensuring that the Oompa Loompas are treated well and given their right to conduct according to the best tactical planning to ensure the long-term goal of the company. Lastly, having the press conference and releasing the statement regarding their social responsibility policy and adherence to ethical guidelines allows them to accomplish their goal based on their prospective market under operational planning. Next, we'll speak about competitive advantage. Competitive advantage is the ability to consistently over a long time be in a competitive situation versus other corporations or companies. It could be based on company brand, marketing, products, and many more. Wonka's competitive advantage is his chocolate and Oompa Loompas. Willy Wonka and Charlie create a new way to extract the cocoa beans and convert it into chocolate in a safe and sanitary way. They purchase new equipment and invite experts on designing new processes to make chocolate. As this is going on, they are able to provide a superior chocolate taste and texture, giving a competitive advantage of having the best quality chocolate in town. After addressing the chocolate process, Willy Wonka and Charlie will improve the labor relation with their Oompa Loompas by redesigning their organization structure, causing them to improve their productivity. First, Willie and Charlie decentralized the business structure from a flat organization to a two-tier structure, allowing the Oompa Loompas more freedom to make management decisions. With the change in structure, so certain social settings will change, allowing the Oompa Loompas to be more flexible and knowledgeable. With this, there is going to be training to work on the new machine for the chocolate process and management training for the newly promoted Oompa Loompas, creating a further competitive advantage. With the complete redesign of the chocolate extraction process, 
Willie and Charlie create a new strategic process to re-enter the market. They create a new manifesto that set the vision of the company. Then they formulate a strategy on how to bring the awareness of their new redesign to the public. After addressing the first process, Willy Wonka and Charlie want to improve the labor relations with the Oompa Loompas. First, Willy and Charlie decentralize the business structure from a flat organization to a two-tier structure, allowing the Oompa Loompas more freedom to make management decisions. With the change in structure, certain social settings will change, allowing the Oompa Loompas to be more flexible and knowledgeable. With this, there is going to be more training to work on the new machine for the chocolate process and management training for the newly promoted Oompa Loompas. The concepts presented by our production of Charlie and the Salty Dilemma starts at the most elementary level of managerial theory. Willy Wonka provides the first introduction to management in the training of Charlie Bucket by identifying challenges. Then the analysis begins of what key skills to attain, what roles he must follow, and the other essential responsibilities. When the villain comes into play, questions of ethics and how to counteract the destructive threat are posed. Strategic corporate social responsibility perspective is addressed to the public by spreading openness of new strategic plans of transparency and a whistleblowing program. After setting an overall vision of the company and brainstorming on how to gain a competitive advantage, the process of formulating then implementing further strategies of planning and organization are set into motion. The Department of Human Resources is given a special amount of examination due to its diverse laborers and is rearranged under decentralized organizations. A new two-tier structure is enforced moving away from a flat organization. Advanced managing and socialization of Oompa Loompas is improved with the on-job training job design, labor relation, and compensation. Our group, the Chaotic Cat Herders, consisted of Jonathan Perez, Michael Ho, Samantha Wabi, and Krista Hull. Our goals were being met at a timely manner and everybody was aware of what was assigned to them. Our group could have been better at working collaboratively online, seeing how sometimes we did run into situations where people had trouble meeting in person, Everybody was making sure that everyone was doing their part and everyone was working together really well. Nobody really felt like they were drawing the short end of the stick and had to do more than others. Our communication via text and email were effective and relayed information reliably. And with that being said, everybody got into the groove of working together really well and really fast and we all understood each other's strengths and weaknesses. And with this understanding, we helped each other to ensure that we had a high performing team. Now that we are at the end of our presentation, our team would like to offer some recommendations for future students. Our team recommends that you guys should take the initiative every step of the way. This course has a lot of content in a short amount of time. However, with enough motivation and commitment from the team, everything will work out on its own. In addition, to get things nice and organized, your team should plan their meeting schedules and ensure that deadlines are met. Also, if there is any miscommunication amongst the team, you guys should get clarification immediately, whether from another team member or the professor. Lastly, if you are having issues, please do not hesitate to contact Professor Diazio immediately. We, the Chaotic Cat Herders, would like to sincerely thank you all for watching our presentation and for sticking with us through the entire semester.